All right, tonight what we're going to be talking about is atomic structure. Most of this should be review for you. So what is the atom composed of? If we think about all these subatomic particles that you've heard of before in the past, either in seventh grade, eighth grade, or earlier, um, subatomic particles are what makes up the atom. So we have three subatomic particles that we're going to focus on in this group. We have protons, neutrons, and electrons. Just to let you know, Sometimes a proton is written as P positive, neutrons written as N zero, and E is written as E with a negative. What those these guys reference are actually their charges. So protons tend to be po tend. They are positive. Neutrons are neutral or have no charge, and electrons have a negative charge. So that sometimes these can be written either way. All right. So what are the pro parts of the atom? Let's go a little bit more into the parts and their characteristics. So we have the electrons. As I've already stated, they have a negative charge. And we say it's a negative one charge. Where they are found is in this cloud outside of the nucleus. Right now, all I want you to understand is, is that it's found outside of the nucleus. It's kind of like around it. I'm going to use what we call the Bohr model to describe how the atom or the electrons are located. So we've got these electrons that are kind of floating around orbiting. Right now we're going to say that they go in rings, but in actuality in a few units we'll talk about this cloud that I'm referencing here. But as long as you know that it's outside the nucleus, we're good to go right now. It is extremely light in mass. Does it have mass? Yes, but if I wanted to try to compare it to a neutron or a proton, I would need 1800 electrons in order to equal the mass of one neutron or one proton. So therefore we say basically it has no mass or it's negligible in mass. The proton is positively charged, okay, as I've already talked about. Think of the word pro, that's positive. So they have a positive charge or a plus one charge. Protons are found in the nucleus always, and they have a relative mass of one. Neutrons are neutral. That's where you kind of get that word neutron, um, and which means that it has no charge. So it's neither positive nor negative. They too are found in the nucleus, and they have a mass of one. So let's label these different parts of the atom. If we look at, first off, I'm going to do the nucleus, which is this big circle. Okay, so that's the nucleus. What makes up the nucleus? Well, we've got the protons and the neutrons, okay, and those are in the nucleus. The protons are these red guys, and there are one, two, three, four, five, six of those guys. The neutrons are neutral, meaning that they have no charge, and if you count them, they too have six. And your electrons are outside of this um, nucleus, so therefore, if you count them, they too have six electrons. Okay, you're going to have to um, learn the different definitions of an atom versus an ion, and we'll also introduce the term an isotope later. But let's focus on atom and an ion right now. The atom is electrically neutral. What that means is it neither is positive nor negative. Okay, in order to do that, you're going to have to understand that your protons, which give you a positive charge, have to be equal to your net, um, electrons, which give you a negative charge. So an atom has an equal number of protons to an electron. An ion, on the other hand, has a positive or it can be positive or negative charge element. So how do you get this positive or negative charge? You gain or lose an electron. So if I were to draw an atom where my nucleus is here and I've got, let's say, a positive, all my protons are here, so I've got a positive three overall as my charge of my center, and I've got these electrons floating out, like on the outsides, right? Where would it be easiest to add or take away um, as far as charges go? Well, the outside is a lot easier than trying to penetrate into that center nucleus. So what ends up happening with all um, atoms or elements is that they'll gain or lose on the outermost energy level, they'll take either away this electron or they'll add to that outermost energy level as far as electrons go. So in order to become an ion, you gain or lose electrons. You never gain or lose protons. There are two types of ions if we want to become more specific. The first type is a cation. And what is a cation? Well, a cation is positive, of course. So a cation is a positively charged ion. Okay, so how can you look at that? If you look at getting A positive, no, it's just a plus ion. So it's A positive ion. How do you get a positive ion? You have to have more positives than negatives, so more protons and electrons. An anion, on the other hand, is a negative ion. How do you get it to become an anion? Well, you are negatively charged, and how do you become negative? You have more negatives than positives, so meaning you have more um, electrons 
than protons. So let's label these and identify whether they're going to be an ion, um, either cation or anion or an atom. So my proton count in A will give me a positive 11 because I have 11 of them. My electron count will give me a negative 10 because I have 10 electrons. So overall, that is a positive one charge. In order, to be po in order to be an ion, I need to be positively or negative charged. So I know now that this is some sort of an ion. In order to be a positive ion, I'm going to be a cation, because remember, it's a positive ion. So this guy is your cation. The next one, B, we have a protons. We have 11. We have 11 electrons. So overall, those are going to cancel, and you get a zero charge. An ion has to be positive or negative. So therefore, it has to be the atom, which is neutral. And then the last thing is C, where we have 11 protons and 18 electrons, which gives me by positive 11 and negative 18. So therefore, I have a negative 7 overall charge. Therefore, I know that it has to be an ion because an ion has a positive or a negative overall charge. And in this case, it's going to be an anion because it is a negative ion. So we've got anion. All right, so here are the different math um, equations that you are absolutely going to have to memorize. These are the only ones that I will not provide you throughout the entire year, I believe. Um, the first thing you have to memorize is that the protons equal your atomic number. So the number of protons equals the atomic number. So if I tell you atomic number is 12, I'm telling you that it is protons, uh, 12 protons. They are synonymous with each other. Okay, and then to figure out your mass, well, if you figure out that three particles that could give you a mass, in an atom, we have protons, which have a mass of one. We have neutrons, which have a mass of one. And we have electrons, which have a mass of zero. So therefore, the only two things that can ever contribute towards mass are your protons and neutrons. Electrons have no mass, so they won't contribute towards it. As far as charges go, you are talking about that protons give you a positive, neutrons have zero charge, and electrons give you negative. So I'm figuring out if the overall charge, I could have a billion neutrons, and it's never going to change my charge because their charges are zero. So therefore, the only two things that contribute towards charge are your protons and your electrons. I always try to logically think about it. If I have more protons, I'm obviously going to be more positive. If I have more electrons, I'm obviously going to be negative. Here is a formula if you would like to um, memorize it. You can always do charge equals your proton number minus your electron number and figure out from there to figure out your electron count, proton count, or your charge. All right. The other thing you're going to have to know is, is this um, symbol form. You're going to have to have it memorized. Okay, Position means a lot in chemistry. If you see something, well, here's your symbol. This is it first off your chemical symbol. So let's say this is chlorine or carbon or boron, you'll see these letters, okay, of the elements. In the upper left will be your mass number, so that will be your proton plus neutron count. In the lower left will be your atomic number, so that means that is your number of protons. And in the upper right, you'll have your charge. The charge is always written in superscript, okay, and same with these guys, super and subscript, as I wrote there, and they are written in a smaller size font. It kind of is like an exponent, if you want to think of it. Um, for these superscripts, okay? So position and size actually really matter when you're writing these out. So let's try to do this one, okay? So the first thing that I want to do is I want to come up with my symbol. I know that my atomic number equals my proton count, so I'm going to look at my proton count of level 11. I'm going to then look at my periodic table, and the, one, the symbol with the atomic number of, L, of 11 is sodium. I'm also going to note that I'm going to put my atomic number in my subscript on the lower left. My mass number equals my proton plus neutrons. So in this case, my proton count is 11. My neutron count is 12. So I know that my mass number is 23. My charge is going to be my comparison of protons plus my, or plus my electrons. So my protons are giving me a positive 11. My electrons are giving me a negative 10. So overall, that is going to give me a positive or you can write it as a plus one, whichever way you want for this upper right. Um, if it's positive one or minus one, you can either write plus or minus, but if it's any number greater than one, then you are actually gonna have to write the number. So if it was positive two, I would have to write positive two, not just a plus. All right, the last definition that you're gonna really have to understand are isotopes. And what are isotopes? Well, they're atoms with the same number of protons, which means they are the same element. Okay, but what is different about them? Well, they have different number of neutrons. 
if they have a different number of neutrons, but their proton count is the same, okay, your mass number will also change. So an isotope has a different mass from each other. Okay, isotopes of each other have different masses, but they're the same element, and therefore they have a different number of neutrons. So when we look at this hydrogen one, okay, it's really important for us to note that that dash one represents the mass number. Notice that I didn't write as hydrogen with a dash one in a smaller superscript font. If I wrote it like that, that would represent the charge. But because I wrote it at the same height as the hydrogen, that means that this guy is actually representing its mass. And it's not a negative one mass, it's saying its mass is one, okay? So hydrogen one in the number represents the mass number, and hydrogen two are isotopes of each other. How do I know? Well, hydrogen, they're both the same element, therefore they have the same atomic number, but if I look at their masses, their masses are different, which also means that their neutrons are different. So I know that they're isotopes of each other. Then I wanna try to answer the question, which isotope has the highest percent abundance? If I look at my isotope um, of hydrogen, I notice that their average mass is 1.00, oh, I think it's seven, on your periodic table. What that means is, is that if I had a bag of all the hydrogens in the universe and I massed all of them and I took their average, their average mass would be 1.007, okay? So if I ask which one is the highest percent abundance, what I'm asking for is if I had that bag, what would I most likely grab? And because the average is closest to one, it would be hydrogen one. If it had been hydrogen dash one, if the, if the average was 1.998, then obviously hydrogen two was more abundant, okay? But that's not the case, so hydrogen one is the more abundant one. What does that 20 mean in neon 20? Once again, as I've reiterated, it's not its charge, it is its mass. How do I know it's not the charge and its mass? Because the mass, um, is written at the same height as that neon. If it was charged, it would have been written in smaller um, and in the superscript position. What is the difference between neon 20, neon 21, and neon 22? Neon, okay, so they're gonna have the same proton count, same oops, atomic number, okay? So I know that because it's all neon. What do I note though, is that they have different masses. Okay, so what's the different? Different masses which means if they have the same number of protons but different masses, I also know they have a different number of neutrons. Which are isotopes of each other? So looking at this, I know that isotopes are the same element, which means that they have the same atomic number. Okay, which ones have the same atomic number? Well, these two guys do. This guy does not have that same atomic number, so I can rule it out as being an isotope of each other. But what I also need to make sure is, is that they have different masses from each other. So looking at this, this guy has a mass of 20. This one had a mass of 22. So therefore, I know that these have different masses and they are the same element. So these two would be the same, would be isotopes of one another. All right, that's the basic information on um, the atom.